I've got some stuff here for mailbag. So if you want to stick around and find out what I've got in here, please do. All right, let's see what's in here. Right, this is a Banggood review item. So I'm just going to cover it briefly now. It's from Banggood. Thank you very much, Banggood, for this. It's obviously sent to me at no charge. And it's just a little digital thermometer. Fairly cheap. Not very expensive at all. So the links for this down below as well. So make sure you go and follow those links and have a look. Of course, there's no battery in it right now. But it's got a little magnetic thing on the back here, looks of it. Let's find something that's magnetic. Not something magnetic. <laughs> something magnetic. There we go. So, yep. And this little, it's like a little tilt stand on the back there, too. Yes, there is. So, it's supposed to show humidity, kind of say humidity and temperature and a couple of little things as well. So I'll do a proper view on it later on. But so I'll be wanting you to get a nice little standard length I'm to so I can sit it on one side in my lab here and uh, just keep an eye on what the actual temperatures are because sometimes I just don't quite know. I have to mess around with things to find out what they are. So I'll do a proper review on that later on. So watch out for that, but definitely go and check the links out below because that buying stuff through Banggood it does help me. You can see yeah, I was just a bit of a shot there what the fart looks like. But it will look like one's powered up at least. So check those links out, because buying stuff through Banggood does help me because I get a commission on items if you use my links to get there. So make sure you use my links, but bookmark those to go to the sites and it helps, helps my channel because I get some extra funding and extra um, credit on a Banggood account so I can buy more items from our bag. He goes directly back into the channel. Alright, what's this thing? Soft, a bit hard to cut. Oh, come on. I'll slide it out. Wherever it is, I don't know what's in it. Oh, I can see what's in it here. Yeah. Right, this is slash. This all goes back to my DC electronic load. My main U, main L, well, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, well, I messed up the calibration on that thing because I was trying to calibrate because it was slightly off. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't, as it turned out, I didn't have the, the required equipment to recalibrate it. So I got there in the end. And I've done video on that, I think. I think I've already published it. Anyway, so this is a, a shunt for that. So I realised when I was doing that calibration at Mainu that um, I didn't have enough shunts. I didn't have the ranges I needed and that sort of stuff. So um, this is a 20 amp. 100 millivolt shunt, which gives me pretty good resolution. Or well, should give me pretty, pretty good resolution. Depends on the accuracy of the, of the shunt as well. So one of the ones I already had was supposed to be a 50 amp, 50 millivolt. Well, so one millivolt was one amp, but that was way off. It was nowhere near the correct resistance. Resistance. So um, it wouldn't actually read the correct voltages with the correct currents. I managed to verify other stuff and realised no, it's definitely not right. So I actually tried tuning that. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to go okay long term or not, but we'll see. So I bought some more shunts. I thought, oh, let's just get a range of shunts, different sizes. And this is one of them. And if you don't know how to use a shunt, what you basically do is you put it in line with the main supply for the thing you're testing. So if you don't, usually you put it on the negative side, most commonly. So you've got the battery one side on the negative, and the negative for the device on the test. On the other side, you can measure a voltage drop across these terminals. And that tells you... Um, approximately how much current the device is drawing. Depends on the accuracy of the shunt, how well tuned it is. Right, that's the critical thing there. If the resistance of the shunt is wrong, you won't get an accurate current reading or voltage reading. So in this case, say it's 20 amps and 100 millivolts. So 100 millivolts, in theory, um, you're getting 20 amps. So if you're getting a 50 millivolt drop across here, you're drawing 10 amps and proportions of those. That's how it's supposed to work, but it depends on the accuracy, how well made it is. How carefully made it is, and that sort of stuff. And the other thing is temperature, they're quite temperature dependent as well. If they heat up, the resistance increases, and so therefore you get different readings. Something you have to watch out for too is ambient temperature. All right, see what's in this one. No, 
Look at that double bag. And these are more shunts. What value to these ones? Doesn't, oh, 30 amp. It's just 30 amp on that one. Because that's only part of what you need to know. You also need to know the uh, voltage. This one doesn't say. It's 20 amp as well. So let's get them out of the packet. I should say on the side what they are. So 20 amp, 75 millivolts this one. So you should get 75 millivolts across it at 20 amp loading. What's this one? This is 10 amps, 75 millivolts. This is 30 amps, 75 millivolts. So the 75 millivolts is a bit annoying because that means you have to do some maths. So you see it's marked on here, just there. But 75 millivolts means you've got to do some maths and work out what it's supposed to be. I mean, for 30 amps, probably not too bad because it means you've got 25 millivolts per 10 amps. So, you know, it's probably not too bad to work out. But these other ones, yeah, you know, 20 amps, for example. What's that, 6.4 something? <laughs> I don't know, 6.6. 6, 6 amps per. Oh, no, bloody. No. <laughs> so, yeah, more chance. So I've got a bunch of those now, so I've got a selection. Always helpful. Sometimes you don't quite know what you need. Again, it depends on the accuracy of these. I have to go through and play with these and see what I actually get out of them and see how accurate they seem to be and work it out. If you have a known current source and a known supply and that sort of stuff, you can actually work out what they actually are quite accurately but you need to have something which is a good reference to start with oh, what's in here? oh, let me down, you can go right through I might have to get a real knife for this oh, there we go right. you can cut through the inner bag in that one All right. Uh, some more of these little probes. So I've got some of these before, and I like them so much I've got some more. These will also be linked down below as well. Nice silicon leads, and you've got these little DuPont connectors on here, and multimeter lead connectors, so you can plug a multimeter lead into this. Let's grab one. So the idea is you can plug a lead into here, and then you can hook this up to either, you can just use the DuPont connector directly onto a test point, or you can use these little um, grabber clips and hook on with this instead. Right, so you can use these little clips, little little mini, called mini grabbers, is that right? Um, Tight little fingers grab out so you can grab like component leads, stuff like that. But yeah, quite a lot of the ones I've purchased before, so I've got some more. I was quite impressed with the quality, they feel quite nice. So now I've got two sets of those. So I'll get them while I can. You never quite know when these things aren't, aren't available anymore. So if you're interested in these things, go and grab them straight away. Because sometimes things, these kinds of bits of gear, um, they'll come and go. They'll be available for a little while, then they'll just disappear. But these are quite you know, pretty cheap and uh, handy things to have. Right. Lots of packaging. And what the hell is this thing? Okay. I vaguely remember, I think. Oh, it's not gonna open. I need something else. Yeah, so do. Get started. So this is a parallel ATA IDE interface. Not that common these days. Some old equipment or some older computers have it still. Well, they always did have it. And it's got a SD card slot on it. 
So the idea here is that um, you can plug this in as a drive adapter to replace a drive in a, another machine. So um, if you've got a, a two and a half inch um, port on your computer or on a bit of test equipment, such as a CMU 200 has, um, some other bits of gear as well have these old parallel ATA interfaces, and this particular one's a two and a half inch because it's. You also see here it's got a pin missing just there. That's a, like a key pin, so the actual plugs that go onto them have got a, a blanked hole, so you can't actually plug them in backwards. And um, yes, yeah, so the idea is you can use this as a, as a replacement for hard drive. So you plug a SD card in there. I think it's an SD card. I'm pretty sure it was. I have to double check it. And um, yeah, you can adapt your drive. Put an SD card instead. Sometimes you've got this old equipment and you want to make sure the drive doesn't fail. I also purchased this previously, which is this SSD, which I'm going to actually put into my unit. But someone said you could get these too, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll get one then. So I did. Might be an option too with something in the future, and it's pretty compact. Yeah, and just to be sure, I've got a micro SD card adapter, which says an SD card form factor, and it just plugs in there, and that's definitely right. That's fine. So that's okay. So it could be very handy. You can put an SD card in here, you know, put a 32 gig card in here or whatever, some old small one. You know, if you've only got like a, a 4 gigabyte drive or something, then you can chuck in a, a cheap 4 gigabyte SD card and be covering it. Pretty handy. Right, what's in this one? Oh, where are we going to put it? Okay, then sorry. It's more scope probes. Now, the one I purchased, well, I've purchased a few of these, haven't I, now? Although you guys might not have seen it yet, because I'm not sure if I published that video previously or not. I don't think I have. So I purchased one of these probes before. It's basically a 500 megahertz probe. And um, I actually quite like this particular one. So I put, purchased another one. It seems to work okay. Got various colours to change the colours, suit your channel number, and you got some little tip shields, plastic shields, so you're doing probing on IC pins and the like, and you put those little covers on so you don't risk slipping off and shorting your pin out. And also, you've got a typical tuning screwdriver there for the conversation. But a lot of these ones, because anyways, there's a little label there, 5 megahertz times 1 times 10, right? which is why I wanted it, because it's got times 10 on there. The very first one I purchased, which is actually is a very thin profile, um, didn't have a times 10 option on it, it's only times 1. Was it? No, it's only times 10, sorry. Um, so I couldn't, you couldn't switch times 1, it didn't have an option. But these ones do have it, and the price isn't too bad on these, they seem to work okay. I need to actually do some proper bandwidth measurements on them, but um, for what I did initially, they seem to be alright. I had to buy some BNC adapters separately so this doesn't come with those, but you can get those. There's actually a source of those, element of 14 sort of those if you need them. So if you've got a scope probe and you want to get a, a BNC adapter which goes onto the end there, to that tip, you plug a tip on and you plug into the BNC port. Uh, a lot of probes come with them, but not all of them do. And element 14 sort of those if you need those. If you need someone to find them. I had to hunt around a little bit, but I found they had them. Two sizes, you've got 5mm and 3.5mm. Anyway, let's have a quick look at these. So I do a whole range. I don't really know how true these are, so I suspect. I mean, this sheet here looks exactly the same as the one that came with the black probe I had, which I purchased. It looks identical, basically. Um, so it's from the same manufacturer. Obviously, this is like a different series of these. These are the specs, in theory. So I've got the 6500. Is it? Is that the one I've got? Yeah, P6500. So that's the one on the right here. And it's also got like a voltage derating curve here as well, depending on what frequency you're running at. So you just set the conversation up, basic stuff. They're cheap probes. I mean, they're not going to be the same quality as you get from a high end range, you know, proper main brand. But from what I've seen when I did the other one, they seem to be working okay, adequately, you know. Better than the first one I picked up, so I thought right, they do well enough. Because I needed these because of my Siglent SDS 2102, which I hacked 
Well, did a hardware hack on hard. Well, it's not really hackers. It's more of a modification, hardware modification, which I did a video on as well a, few, uh, a couple of months ago. And I made a 340 megahertz bandwidth scope from 100 megahertz. So um, I needed some better probes because the ones that came with it were 100 megahertz probes, which are okay if you're using below 100 megahertz. But if you're doing above that, then um, you need a bit more. All right, this is the Element 14 bag. So uh, I've got an idea what's in here, it's probably capacitors. Let's get the invoice out of the way. What does it say? Yep, caps. So 4,700 microfarad and 25 volt caps. So yeah, I didn't have. I think I didn't have many of this particular voltage. This is my 4,700 microfarad draw. It is 25 volt as well. So why did I buy more? Maybe I bought some last time. That's what happened. As I bought some and they sent me a half the order. I think something like that. Oh, I've ordered them twice. I don't know. I've got a bunch of them anyway. That's fine. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. And um, share the video. That's quite important these days. YouTube isn't doing such a good job of, sh of sharing videos and notifying people. So sharing the video helps to get my channel out there and helps you to spread the word to your friends so that, hey, you can buy these bits and pieces cheaply. And I'll try and cover them in more detail later on, you know, as, as times come up. And don't forget to check the links down below for anything you see here. Which you might be interested in. Uh, probably not the capacitors because there's generic things, you don't really need to worry about that. You know, these are LMA 14s, it's kind of something I'm buying myself. But these other things, I'll put links down below for those. And you can go and get them directly. And yeah. But these look like nice quality, these ones look like quite, quite a good build. I like the ones I purchased previously from JK Electronics, they didn't look the same quality anyway, strangely. Right, moving on. Thanks for watching, catch you later.